What is the energy in joules of an x-ray photon with a wavelength of 6.15 times 10 to the negative ninth meters? So for the first part of this, um, we're given a wavelength, we'll, uh, we'll define it as lambda, and we're asked to find out what the energy is uh, in a wavelength such as that. So we can use Einstein's equation that uh, for the energy of a photon, energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. Now, we don't know what the frequency is right yet, but we can use uh, another, uh, another equation from simple harmonic motion that the velocity of a wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. Now, if we assume that this X-ray photon is traveling through empty space, which is uh, the only assumption we, we have to make in order to find out what the velocity is, so the velocity of a, of a photon in empty space is equal to c, or the speed of light in empty space. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to substitute in c into this equation. So c is equal to the wavelength times the frequency of the photon. And then we but our equation for uh, Einstein's equation for energy, energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. We don't know what the frequency is, so we're going to isolate it. So uh, we divide by the wavelength. So c over lambda is equal to the frequency. And then we can just plug this in to substitute for the frequency. And so we get that the energy is equal to the uh, Planck's constant times C over, over L, or over lambda. Now the last part of this is just plugging in numbers. Planck's constant, it's a constant, so it's never going to change. 6.62606957 times 10 to the negative 34th power. Uh, it actually goes out much further than that, but and you, you could actually probably truncate it at like 6.26 if you wanted to and make it times 10 to the negative 34th. And then the speed of light, is, C, is equal to 299,792,458, uh, I'm sorry, 299,792,458 meters per second. And the last thing you need to plug in, so this number will go right here and this number will go right here the last thing you want to plug in is your wavelength and that's uh, 6.15 for, for this problem 6.15 times 10 to the negative ninth and that's in meters now to do the dimensional analysis really quick Planck's constant has units of joules times seconds uh, the speed of light has units of meters per second and the wavelength has units of meters so at this point, the seconds are going to cancel out and the meters are going to cancel out. And we're going to be left with units of joules, which is energy. That's what we're asked to find. So dimensionally, everything works out. Then part two of this question says, convert this energy to electron volts. So the energy I got was uh, 3.22 times 10 to the negative 17th. And, it wants me to and that's in joules. And it wants me to convert it to electron volts. So what I'll do is I'll set up a ratio. So one electron volt... One electron volt is equal to uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. You, this number may be familiar to you from the last unit. It's the the charge on one uh, one electron. It's the the standard charge on one one electron or one proton. So the reason that number is the same is because the definition of an electron volt is the amount of energy that an electron will lose if it goes across the potential of one volt. So if you remember way back in, uh, I think it's chapter 15, 16, um, the force on a charge, the force was equal to K, uh, Ke, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And then if you remember, force times distance is work or energy. So if we multiply this by delta X, then we, we transform this into the potential energy. And then, so the potential energy divided by the charge is equal to the voltage. So if we divide this whole thing by some charge, then we cancel out a charge, and we get, uh, and then delta x cancels out the squared. So we get that the, the voltage is Ke times the uh, charge over the radius. So if you have a standard charge, and usually it's capital Q whenever you're talking about voltage, whenever you have a standard charge um, that in a, in a distance that equals one volt, then you pass one electron through it and you'll get this much energy out of it, or one electron volt. 
So if that wasn't convoluted enough, we'll just set up a ratio. So 1 electron volt divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules is equal to 1. It's 1 unit. And so I can set up another uh, dimension on this side of the equation and say that it is equal to my, uh, so some number of, some x number of electron volts divided by 3.22 times 10 to the negative 17th joules. And then I can just multiply this to the other side and find out what my x number of electron volts are. So I'll go ahead and, and do that. So 3.22 times 10 to the negative 17th times uh, joules times 1 electron volt divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. My joules cancel out and whatever I'm left with is electron volts and I get 201.708 electron volts. Now finally it asks if a more penetrating x-rays are desired should the wavelength be increased or decreased. So what it's saying is if I want an x-ray that goes deeper, what would that mean? It means energy goes up. So if the energy we said was equal to h times f and the velocity is equal to lambda times f, if energy goes up, Planck's constant can't change at all. The frequency has to go up. So if the frequency goes up, what happens to the wavelength? Well, v over lambda is equal to f. If frequency goes up and the velocity doesn't change, that means the wavelength has to decrease in order to keep this proportion accurate. So the answer to that question is the wavelength would have to decrease and the part d, the frequency, would have to increase. I'll just give you an idea by, by plugging in some numbers. Let's just say that my velocity is 4 meters per second. I'm simplifying things so that you can see the numbers working and that the wavelength is 2 meters per second. So uh, that would mean that my frequency would equal 2 hertz or it, it wouldn't even be hertz at this point but it would we'll just say 2. We'll just give it a standard number 2. Uh, and then so if I wanted the frequency to go up 4 stays the same. If I decrease the wavelength to 1 then all of a sudden frequency is equal to 4. Frequency went up. So if you decrease the wavelength, you increase the frequency. And then if you look at the energy equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, let's just imagine Planck's constant is unitless. Let's just say it's one unit. And our energy is 5. That means that the frequency would have to be 5. And let's say we want that to go up. Planck's constant can't go, can't change, but the frequency can, so we increase the frequency. Uh, and that's all there is to it. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the About section of this video. And on the blog, you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.